Hey people, my name is Molly and you're watching Love and Passports. If this is the first time you're watching, do check out episode 1 and 2. You know the story so far. If you're here to uh, get some tips and tricks on how to have a budget luxury holiday in India, then stay tuned anywhere. Alright, so India is one of the few countries we can actually afford to have a luxury holiday or some people call it vacation uh, you could have a holiday living in fancy five star seven star hotels you could have a chauffeur driven car showing you around you could even have a personal butler so i will focus on five things uh, to consider if you want to have a luxury budget holiday and number one is hotels now, staying in a fancy five-star hotel can be super expensive, but then there's a way to do it. Okay, first of all, what you want to do is pick a hotel chain, check out what loyalty program they have, and enroll yourself in it. There are typically no fees for joining a loyalty program, so you're good at that. Just sign up and see what kind of rates you could get through the loyalty program instead of just booking online. In our case, we got uh, almost 10 to 20% discount on the best rates we could find online. Second thing what you want to do is book with the same chain of hotels in every city you go to. And how that's going to help you is like this. So in our case, we booked our first hotel in New Delhi and then I sent an email to the front office manager requesting him if he could help us out to book our remaining of the hotels for a whole India trip. And one thing the super fancy hotel chains appreciate is information. So when a traveler like us who tells them that, hey, this is our plan, I'm gonna come here, then go there, uh, these guys actually get an opportunity to do what they love, which is to provide great customer service in exchange of, of course, great customer feedback. As expected, the front office manager of ITC Moria sent a very elaborate email to ITC Mughal, which is in the city of Agra, where we're heading next to see the Taj Mahal, explaining our plans. And by that evening itself, the other hotel manager sent us an email explaining all the different packages they had. He explained what all he could do to make us stay memorable and what we could actually purchase. We were in Agra for just one day, but it was such a delight. Uh, this hotel has one of the biggest spas in Asia and uh, Morgan and I definitely made a point to get a treatment done. It wasn't even that expensive. We were offered a discount as part of a package, which brought it down to just rupees 3000, which is like 40 bucks. Uh, to pay just 40 50 bucks for a massage in a five star luxury hotel that is definitely a steal our next destination was in jaipur we were staying at itc rajputana and uh, the manager there as well approached us uh, through a phone call and explained to us uh, what uh, kind of rooms did they have an offer and what they could do for us originally we had planned to um, go from Jaipur to Jodhpur which is a city on the edge of the Thar desert the desert in India but because Morgan's tummy did not cooperate well we had to cut that short and we ended up staying for three nights in Jaipur when we informed the hotel that we're gonna extend our stay because she's not feeling well they really went out of the way to make our stay comfortable, extra special. They sent us a cake, they sent us a bouquet of flowers. People were checking on us every few hours if we needed something. It was an awesome stay. But the other thing you can do with hotels to maximize the benefit, you can ask them for anything you want done, anything you want done special. Since just in my case, I asked the first hotel in New Delhi if we could put a cake out because it was Morgan's first time in India and they did that, which was quite nice. I asked them for traditional welcome. Uh, that was really cool for Morgan. Uh, I asked them, uh, I asked the fourth hotel if they could uh, you know, do something to the room because it was a birthday. 
and they went really all out for that. They asked me if I wanted to put one of our pictures in the room before we arrived and I thought more than us she would appreciate the puppies and I emailed some of the pictures of Hansi and Rosie and there it was when she came to the room and made her super happy. Extra brownie points for the boyfriend. In a, so in a nutshell, to get amazing 5-star hotel rates for your budget luxury holiday, pick a hotel chain, stick with it, sign up for the loyalty program and do not be shy to send an email to the manager of the hotel you're booking at and asking them for anything possibly you want done for your stay. The second thing which I want to talk about is taxis. You want to stick to Uber. And it might sound very obvious, but beware, don't book a cab for the whole trip of yours. Simply go ahead and book an Uber as and when you need it. Uh, a lot of foreigners will be surprised by how cheap Uber is in India. We use Uber to go to every monument, every bar, every touristy shopping place in Delhi. Must have taken it at least seven or eight times and we only pay like 40 bucks for two and a half days. So that's super cheap. So stick to Uber. Don't worry about booking yourself a cab in the city while sightseeing. Okay, number three is food. Now if you're staying in a hotel, the breakfast is possibly included. So make sure you have a big breakfast. Have a breakfast like a king. For the other meals, you have three types of options. Option number one are the chain restaurants like McDonald's, uh, Burger King, Subway. In India, you would get yourself a meal for three to five bucks, which is durable. Uh, no beef though, mostly chicken, a lot of chicken. The second option for you would be standalone restaurants. Now these restaurants could be really nice. Uh, you could find um, Indian cuisine restaurants, you can find a national cuisine, Chinese, continental, Italian, and some of them gives a run for the money to even five-star restaurants. And that brings me to the these fancy five-star hotel restaurants, Michelin star, and all that. Be careful. It can easily rack up your bill to two, three, four hundred bucks for a couple of people. Having said that, food is going to be one of the main highlights of your trip to India. So you want to experience as much variety as you can. In India, every state has a different cuisine, different flavors, different spices. Some states' cuisines prefer sweet food, some states have very hot food, uh, some states even have bland food. So there's a lot of variety. So do try it out. Um, now, there's so much to experience in India and the most convenient thing is to go for a package. These packages can work really well. The tour operator puts you on a bus with a group of other people, they give you an itinerary, for that city and you just go from one spot to another and it is highly recommended. But talking of saving money on a budget luxury holiday, instead of this, you could shortlist yourself the places you want to see in a city and then simply book an Uber, reach there, all the tickets are standardized, they're printed at the ticket counter so you don't get, uh, you can't get scammed to pay more than what you should. You should get a guide at the tourist spot so that he or she can explain to you the whole story and uh, makes the most of your experience. They all have government printed passes or a license which clearly states how much they're supposed to charge you. Talking of pros and cons, in, a, in an organized tour package, you can be rest assured that you are going to see all the tourist attractions of that city which could be six to seven in a day but in case you're doing it on your own you without getting exhausted without really stretching your day you could uh, fit in maybe two or three a max four 
so so that's something which uh, you need to consider but otherwise simply make your own short list of things to see and do them on your own save some money by not opting for these store packages and instead use it for some shopping or some other experiences uh, which you otherwise would probably skip and finally where you can save money is interstate travel so india is a big country it is one of the largest countries in the world and when you come to india on a vacation you would have to travel to different cities to make the most out of it and which means you'll have to figure out how to get from one city to another uh, india is very well connected you can choose to travel by an airplane a taxi a bus or even a train and what i strongly strongly recommend if the drive is within five to six hours from your point a to point b simply pick a cab and that to pick a cab book a cab online there are websites which you can go and book a cab online you simply pay, pay five or six bucks to book the cab and then you pay the driver once the trip is done uh, two hours before the time you requested for the driver to arrive at the destination you are at at your hotel or wherever you are um, you get the information of the driver and it's super convenient then trying to figure out how to go to the railway station or the bus stop cab is the way to go as long as the city is not too far away airplanes are also convenient of course you have to go th through the whole uh, airport Jingmang it actually takes you almost four to five hours to um, travel by plane as well because you take an hour to reach the airport then an hour to check in the flight would be at least an hour and then uh, an hour to get to the hotel wherever you are instead you take a cab picks you up from the hotel and drops you to your next hotel convenient and while the cab will cost you around 35 40 50 bucks for the whole trip for two three four of you however can if can fit in that car uh, an airplane ticket if not booked in advance can cost you 70 80 to 100 bucks per person to travel uh, trains are super exciting Indian Railways is the busiest railway network in the whole world it is an experience you should take but only take it if you have a local traveling with you because Railway stations are not the most convenient. It's, it, can, it can be tough. It can be tough to travel on trains. And it is, while it's not dangerous, there are things which you rather not involve yourself. You know, we're, we're discussing the Indian railways right now. You're the first time at a railway station. How would you rate railway transportation on your favorites list? It's <laughs> always interesting. There's always stuff to see unique stuff to say but you tell me you, you traveled all over the world 10 countries um, so what's what do you feel I feel like I haven't had to do much for myself because you figured everything out and done it for me no I'm asking <laughs> about the railway station like what are your perceptions like what what does it make you feel looking at all this um, it's yeah. fine you don't be you don't have to be candid yeah. you can say I've wanted to ride a train to India for a while. Okay. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, it was hot and there are lots of people and smell it smells. So it's smelly, a lot of people, and it's hot. <laughs> yeah. What about all the people who wanted to take selfies with you? Two people. Uh, and then one other third kid that was too shy. No, what were the other people who've been making? Uh, buses can be convenient buses as long as as you can figure out where uh, the bus stop is because the good buses are the private buses and private buses have their own random places they pick passengers from as long as you can figure out where the buses pick passengers from it's convenient it's uh, it's very comfortable but it takes almost double the time what a car or a cab or a taxi would take for you to reach the same place and it could be almost as expensive, say, for having your own chauffeur-driven car. I'm sure a lot of you guys actually want to try and experience, say, a tuk-tuk or a hand-pull, a pedal rickshaw. 
uh, just simply walk up to a, a tuk-tuk or a rickshaw in a market and just say, hey, I've got a buck, How, what ride can you give me? Just pay the buck, take a ride and be done with it. Don't worry about using rickshaw as a means of transport. Honey. Where you go? Honey. <laughs> Honey, honey. <laughs> honey. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't actually really scared you, but I didn't want to wait and you see. Alright guys, these were the five things which we did to enjoy a luxury budget holiday in India. This trip was memorable for both of us and holds a very special place in our hearts. Get the planner out and make this trip to India happen. It's certainly worth it. Don't forget to catch the next episode. I make these episodes every second week. Yes, every second week. Episode four would be about Morgan meeting my parents for the first time and about the beautiful city of Amritsar. You're watching Love and Passport. What else do we need? <laughs> Happy birthday dear Morgan Happy birthday to you May God bless you With the long road <laughs> You change the song That's not the song It's the song that goes like this Let me. <laughs> <laughs>